Vice Marshal Femi Badebo retired OFR shared his expertise on how to manage and live with cerebral palsy. This week, we bring you the concluding parts. Good evening. I am Olasun Bomudupe. Stay tuned. care now tell us care for persons living with um cerebral palsy what is the best i i can't say what is the best way or what or what is the best sort of care for persons living with cerebral palsy because it's a complex disability now form of disability what is the best form of care the primary caregiver for a child is usually the mother hmm. um and hopefully the father and if there are other children in the house then the siblings also come in hand but because the mother is the first point of contact um, some of this signs of cerebral palsy can be detected now even at birth and when it happens what uh, a proper hospital do um, and unfortunately, we don't seem to have enough of those people. You see, we place too much emphasis on doctors, doctors and nurses. But there are other specialists who can help with care and management. These experts who um, you know, can be social workers, who have been specifically trained to identify the signs and symptoms and to guide the parents and caregivers, they are supposed to be the first point of call where the hospital will say, look, please spend some time with these parents to prepare them for the journey ahead. Mm -hmm. Because it is a difficult journey um, and can be very dangerous, I mean, and very demanding on the parents because there's a lot of stuff on it. Everybody ha wants to have a child who will live up to a lot of expectations. And once it is obvious from day one, that this child has a problem. Many people get discouraged. Mm -hmm. So the idea of this kind of management for the parents is for them to understand CP and to understand that there are options, management options for the child. And the options have to start immediately. And the first thing really is for the parent to accept that, okay, this child does have a problem. You see, with a first child it's difficult for somebody who has a first child to really tell if things are not going well um that's why you see some people from parents with a first child who are three years not talking and they still they still think it's not a problem but when an older parent or somebody who had my experience shows up or is around they are the ones who quickly notice the other person who is likely to notice quickly hmm. is we then you take the child to the medical centers for their you, you know, prescribe inoculations, vaccinations, and hopefully those ones will now begin to guide the parent. There's a problem here that if a friend or a relation comes and says, something's wrong with your child, um, there's a defensive mechanism in young mothers who are likely to say, no, they're not wrong with my child. Hmm. Because the child, when they're really young, they look okay, okay? Um, it is when they start getting older, some of them even crawl before they become get to a stage where they can no longer crawl, when they can no longer do certain things. And so we have children that are what you call late bloomers, late developers. Um, these days, I don't know what children are eating. You even mm -hmm. see on social media some children that are not up to uh, a year old that are talking, that are even <laughs> showing signs of flashes of brilliance, right? But um, that's to show you the right way by your parents. 
So even older parents and some doctors will say, give the child some time. And many children will actually pick up as they grow older. Now I'm talking about six months to a year. But those with bad cases of cerebral palsy will not. So once you understand that and you begin to, you accept your child. And the danger here is that you have all kinds of experts who want to make money out of, it, of a parent who cares about their child, who are willing to offer you all kinds of remedies mm. and cures. Most of them are um, herbal, okay? Uh, non-specific medications, even prayer is part of it, okay? And, and a lot of parents will tell you they've spent a lot of money or they would have spent a lot of money before they come to the realization is that that of the fact that cerebral palsy has no cure. cure. Mm. It only has management options. And the best management option is love. You know, undivided love for your child and encouragement. No matter what little they can do, the more you encourage them, the more you cheer them up, the more you praise them, the more they'll try. Because the, the child's primary um, focus at an early age is to impress or to get approval from mm -hmm. this mother or any other caring person that's around. Um, Air Vice Marshal Femi Gbadebo, let's look at going forward what would you like to see changed about cp in terms of rights um care management and all that what would you like to see well everybody's talking about mindset and and that is the key changing mindset mindset of parents of medical personnel of caregivers caregivers uh government agencies and um even ngos um, until we really understand that these people have a role that they can play and in a lot of foreign countries, even in Nigeria, we have those who have done very well. Um, the gentleman that I told you about at the beginning, he's married now, he has two children, okay? I mean, um, at the time we met, I don't think he realized he could get married. Hmm. I know a couple of ladies who are, one is as old as 48, another one is maybe uh, close to 40 now, and so on, who I don't think marriage is on their calendar, hmm. okay? Because the society, unfortunately, is not receptive to certain things. We had a level of development when people became, started to become really aware but as we cross that level, instead of things getting better, we seem to have moved on to a level of protectionism, a level where more parents now are feeling that having a child with a disability is a sign of failure on their part. And so they don't want to accept failure. There are powerful people in this country, in government, in uh, you know, in religious circles, in traditional circles, and other professions who have children with disability, like cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, autism, and all, who refuse to come out, refuse to share their stories. And then we have a lot of young parents who have seen maybe going public more of a way of raising money. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're more after chasing money they're not doing the homework to really get the figures right. Mm. Um, they're either just, and everybody now, even therapists, is trying to sell, um, I'll call it knowledge which they have not properly earned. Mm. Okay, so you see everybody now is doing training for teachers on, on managing children, CPE and stuff like that. Of course, for a small fee, um, and so it's like disability, political cerebral policy has been commercialized at a very disturbing level. Hmm. And we need to talk about it more and bring people together. And you, people don't even want to collaborate. Hmm. It's like, yeah, a lot of people come to me 
uh, spend as much as a year or two working with Benola, working with me, interact with me. Um, but before you know what's happening, they are all on social media, they've started doing mm. something. And after that, all you, you don't even see their break light anymore. Mm. Um, and when you watch them and listen to them, it's very painful for someone like me with the kind of information that they're giving out uh, and so on. You know, it's like when you train somebody as a cook and the person has not even I have just learned the basics of making stew and then they decide mm. to open a restaurant and they want to <laughs> care with it. Um, you, know, you can imagine what you'll get out of such a place. So, um, we also need regulatory authorities from mm. government and all to begin to step in and see how things can be regulated and probably managed. Parents with children with cerebral palsy, one of the reasons that they rush out and trying to start doing fundraising and all for themselves is that it's a very costly venture to raise these children. Mm. And unlike what you find abroad, where government and private sector come in at great extent to assist in terms of medication, in terms of assistive devices, and in in most cases in Europe, America, Canada, Australia, with actual allowances for the parents, where it is now recognized that one parent, usually the mother, can be designated the primary caregiver to the child and be paid to be at home looking after the child. And the child, is, um, him or herself, as they grow, can earn increasing various of funding for themselves. So you find parents of children with disability living comfortably hmm. based on the recognition from government and all. Here, you find parents with disability being left totally on their own. And while I say that some of the things they're doing is not exactly palatable, but really, what can you do? Well, how can you help? Okay, so um, we must change our mindset hmm. about these things. And um, the media, I thank you very much for this program. I thank you for all the other things that you've done with me and other people in this field. Uh, it's through the media that we can do these things, and hopefully. But you see, apart from talking about, like me talking about cerebral policy, we have to begin to find those who have made a success of their lives. Your call to action as we celebrate um, World CP Day. Um, Parents and adults living with cerebral palsy have to understand that they have a primary role in pushing this advocacy. Um, and that's where telling your story, coming out to share your experiences um, as a parent, to share both the, your, the experience of your child and your own, what you are going through, what you have experienced, how your life has changed because of this child. And as an adult, uh, to even share some of the experiences you have with members of the public and how you have been able to uh, navigate life to where you are now. And that's where um, World CP Day comes in. Uh, World CP Day actually started in 2012 by United Cerebral Palsy Australia, one of the largest cerebral palsy organizations in the world. And it is because up to today as I speak, World Health Organization is yet to have a day dedicated to cerebral palsy. Mm. Um, so, and the history is very simple. Um, when cerebral palsy was identified, um, what followed quickly after was the fact that it is not contagious, not infectious, you cannot spread or give it to anybody. And so, unlike COVID, unlike uh, all the other crazy conditions that mix the government and the world and what are going to run up and down, this is one condition where if you have it, it's just you that's living with it. And so, on a serious note, there's no money for big business, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, so um, the research into cerebral palsy just died about 80 years ago, hmm. and nothing much has happened since then. 
And so this organization thought, no, we need to do something. And they started it with less than 30 cerebral palsy organizations in a few, in a handful of countries around the world. When we came out, we were looking for World CPU Day or like World Health Organizations. We didn't find it. But luckily, through a Google search, we found this organization, which is actually um, a virtual organization. And the aim has, all, has been to continue to celebrate people with CP on a particular day. Uh, Americans have a day which is 25th of March. That was pushed for by a group of parents also, who finally got one state to recognize it. And later, I think by 2014, uh, the Congress of the United States now accepted um, March as Cerebral Policy Awareness Month and 25th of March as Cerebral Policy Day. But this particular movement that started in Australia has gone worldwide. And it has grown from year to year to a state now where you have over, uh, uh, you have hundreds of organizations in over a hundred countries that come out. And the call is to simply wear green, post information about cerebral policy, and generally play your own individual part hmm. to help with awareness. It is hoped that. Uh, very soon. In fact, I don't think anybody thought it would take this long, but it was hoped that very soon the World Health Organization will come in. And so it started on the first um, Wednesday in October in 2012. But after a few years, it was decided that, look, this thing cannot be shifting every day until a consensus was made by a group of people who had been formed into an international uh, you know, governing council of which I was a key member, uh, nine of us, and we finally selected 6th of October as the final day. So now we celebrate on 6th of November. Uh, I know that does what it can on the 6th, but we have a policy of not calling people out on a weekday. So we always go for maybe a walk or like we're doing this year for a Zumba on the next available Saturday, which is 7th of October. But so what we call on everybody, whether you have CP or not, if you're a friend of CP, if you want to help spread this information, is to wear green. Uh, post your picture and just say, I support cerebral policy awareness. And um, um, follow us, follow our CP day on, on social media and continue to do your own little bit. And if you see anybody with CP, any child with CP, any parent kind of child with CP, smile and uh, you'll be doing a lot of good for them. Undivided love, care, positive mindsets, increased awareness and government intervention is all we need to improve awareness about cerebral palsy. Thank you so much Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo, um, retired OFR, founder of Cerebral Palsy Initiative for your thoughts and expertise on living with cerebral palsy. Hey, thank you so much for having me and for doing this for World CP Day. God bless you. All right. It's Sound Health continues with trending health report from around the world.
It is still sound health on Lagos television. More to come in a moment. Well, this is where we say thank you on today's episode of Sound Helps. We've been talking cerebral palsy, how to live with the condition. Any form of disability is not a sign of failure. You need to embrace cerebral palsy and other physical challenges. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 0035826603 or follow us on social media at LCV Social, hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make health living your choice.